for my sheep hear my voice and they follow they follow after me yes I am the El Shaddai the Adonai the great I am the refuge the strength the rock the tower of help the shelter in the time of flood I am I am I am the Yahweh I am the resurrection and the life I am the lamb I am the lion but for every one of them I am the shepherd of their souls and I will lead them when they come I lead them to my green pastures where my shalom is what I have for them my shalom is is the eternal life the quality the nature the culture of eternal life is is shalom that perfect peace that perfect bliss I bring them there in the green pastures I I make them to to lie down in green pastures my grace is abundant there my peace there's mercy the steadfast love that's what I bring them into I cover them with it I strengthen them with mercy and grace I strengthen them with my loving kindness I lead them in the paths of righteousness they they must learn to love that place of shalom they must learn to love that place where it's green sometimes they don't like it any longer sometimes they come there once in a way sometimes that parts of righteousness all in that book that I given in their hands it stays on the shelf it stays and they don't know the path of righteousness because they have fallen out of love of green pastures of still waters of paths of righteousness but I know each of them by name and I lead them in and out and they will they will find rest I teach through rest I nurture them through love kindness and goodness I nurture them and I and I take them through I we walk we we leave the green pastures because they live in a different place they got to the the, the green pastures is the souls I see you I comfort them in those places but then they go out and they walk in difficult places you see they need to walk in a dark world under the devil and the powers of darkness and as they walk there I I do desire that they walk in the valley of the shadow of death they will fear no evil my rod and my staff it comforts them it comforts them and as they walk through as they walk through I use my rod you see as they're walking through so many times I use my rod and 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 they and they're looking at me and they're uttering sometimes some meaningless things and I say thou shall not use the name of the Lord thy God in vain no no that shall not make me into an idol for Sunday morning worship you will walk with me every day I I nudge them with a rod thou shall keep the Sabbath day holy that's the only thing that's going to keep you when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death thou shall now don't fight with people don't murder don't hate don't hate don't hate it'll, it'll hurt you in that valley don't hate don't hate don't be angry and say I don't talk to that person anymore and and don't be angry inside your family and and you don't talk to your wife you don't do that you don't talk with the family you, you so hey no go love love I discipline them 
I discipline them. Don't commit adultery. Get off the pornography. Get off all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. It, they, I know you didn't sleep with a woman, but how's your cell phone? How, how's those things? I discipline them. I, I push them forward. I push them forward. And I tell them, you know, be careful of lust. Be careful of anger. It's dangerous. And, and sometimes, they are, sometimes they don't understand me. And, I, and I, I walked Samson and I said, son, son, my rod told him, you are under the Nazarite vow. You're under the Nazarite vow. He didn't like it. He went to his parents. He had a fight. He said, I want to marry a Philistine woman. I want to marry a Philistine woman. He married the Philistine woman. He never submitted to my discipline to be a Nazarite, to be separated. And the next minute, he, his engagement ceremony is on. Everything is over. He, gets, he proposes a joke. And then he goes out and, and, and his wife seduces him and gets the secret of the joke. And the secret is out. And the guests understand what he said. He gets out and goes in anger. He is so angry. He first didn't listen. And then he's so angry. He ignores the red lights of the rod. And the next moment, he's walking in another valley because the best man at the wedding got to marry his wife. And he's walking. And now he finds a prostitute in Gaza. Finds a Philistine prostitute. His life goes downhill. She gives him away. He leaves his anointing. His eyes are gouged out. His hair is cut. The anointing is gone. He can't see. He's in the mill. And on the mill, he cried to me. He cries out. He cries out for help. And I put the staff inside, and I, and I, and I put it around his body, and I, and I lifted him up. And he pulled the whole wall down at the end of his life. Oh, I can tell you about my son Job. My son Job would use my rod and his ten children. He said, hey, 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 honor the Lord. And they, they were having all their parties with all their drinking and everything else. And my son Job said, don't honor God, honor God. He's the most righteous man. His children were not automatically righteous. But he told them to honor God. And the more he told them to honor God, they done something else. They ignored the, 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 the rod. And then when they walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you see when you play in the valley of the shadow of death, when the valley caught up on them, all ten of them died at one shot. When my servant Job stood, he was so cast to the ground, his, his wife told him, curse God and die. But my servant Job said, his rod and his staff, it comforts me. And my servant Job stood in the cemetery where ten graves were. And my servant Job says, I know my Redeemer liveth. My dove servant knew how to submit to my rod of discipline and my staff of rescue. Oh, I, I can tell you about David. I told, he said, he said, God, I love you. I God, I love you. In his emotionalism, he went, he wanted to bring the ark. And I was telling him, David, David, read, read, read the Pentateuch. Read, read how the ark should be carried. But he became king, so he ran. He said, get the costliest, the best cows, the best cart. Get the, David, David, David. He was too busy trying to please me his way. You can't please me your way. If you want to please me, you better give me the things that I like. And I love honor. Thou shalt honor and love the Lord with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. And my son tried to carry my presence in a cart. People died because my son didn't understand when the rod was instructing him on my way. Oh, I can tell you of my son David. I could tell you. I could tell you. He numbered the people. He wanted to see how strong he was. He forgot he stood alone in the valley. And the rod came hard. There was plague. It wiped them out. And I can tell you another story of my son David. He was learning. I was a shepherd. I was prodding him. I was pushing him. And I said, thou shalt not commit adultery. He, he, his eyes were on the of the woman next door when his eyes were on Bathsheba. He took a committed adultery, then committed murder to cover the adultery. The child was born. I sent the rod to him. 
It was pretty harsh and strong when the prophet stood before him and brought the rod and said, you are that man who has killed, who has murdered, who has committed adultery. I sent a harsh rod before him. But my son David, when my harsh punishment went to him, he didn't yield to discipline, so this time it was punishment. My son David looked at me and cried and wept, and he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right. He knew he was fallen. He knew he needed my staff to pull him out. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, O God. Take not your Holy Spirit. Restore the joy of my salvation. And I pulled him out of his pit. And he watched the baby that was born to Bathsheba. And he wept and he cried with fasting. He was full of repentance and he was crying with fasting. Days went on. Fourteen days he cried and fasted. I said, my son, I've already judged this. I've already judged there was discipline. There was punishment. There was judgment. And one day he noticed everyone was standing quietly and whispering. And, and he said, what? What are you whispering? And they were afraid to tell my son David. And he says, I know what's happened. The baby's died. And they were shocked. They said, if he knows the baby's died, he might kill himself. He, it, this looks terrible. He cannot take the news. But he gets up. He goes. He washes his face. He cleans himself up. He comes out. And everyone shocked and said, how come? When the baby was sick, you were in that position. The baby dies. You see, my rod and my staff was a comfort to my son. And he says, I asked him, I asked him. And now in the valley of the shadow of death, my son David gets up and walked to my temple. He bathed himself, cleaned himself, and walked to my temple. And he worshipped. He worshipped. Because the Lord was his shepherd. He had no want. We walk through those valleys. We walk through those valleys. Oh, David used it. David used it carefully. We, we, we need to walk through, you see. But what's that? Enemy? Enemy? Did I, did I hear somebody say, oh, in the valley there's enemies? Yes, I know there's enemies. Oh, Pastor Gavin's wife is calling out, enemies, enemies. Don't worry, don't worry. Just wait a little while. Just wait a little while. What? Enemies. Oh, you want me to go with you to... Okay, what do we need to do? Oh, we need to go and we need to get them beaten up. You see, in the valley of, of, of darkness, in the valley of darkness, I'm not fighting the darkness. I am the light of the world. In the valley of the shadow of death, I'm bringing you comfort and teaching you how to walk with my rod and my staff and my presence with you. I teach you to how to walk the valley of the shadow of death. But even, we, but even as, as we do that, we walk to other places. We walk into other spaces and the enemy is coming after you. Well, what would I do? Come, 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 come. I have a special place when the, when the enemy is coming after you. Come, I'll take you to a special place. Come to my table. Come to the table I'm preparing for you. Oh, you're not, you're not excited about the table. Oh, wait. No, no, you, 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 need, you need some more influence. Make that call. Make sure that judge and that lawyer wins the case. Oh, husband's giving you trouble. Yeah, I know that, Pastor Gavin. I know that guy. I, I, I'll deal with him. Oh, yeah, I'll deal with him. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. When the enemy comes, come to the table. Come to the table that I prepared. Yes, there's more. Where? There's more. Bring it. Bring it on. Bring it on to the table. There's, there's so much on the table. Come to my table when the enemy is against you. Lord. You might be saying, Lord, Lord. Oh, why, why the table? Lord, when the enemy is coming like a flood, you're, you're bringing me to a table. Yes, yes. Oh, he's been worrying you too much. Drink some water. Cool off a little bit. Yeah, 
You just cool off a little bit. Don't worry. Come, come to the table. Come to the table. Mm. Oh, oh, have something. Have something at my table. Have something at my table. Have something at my table. Just, 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 just eat something at my table. Go ahead. Oh, oh. Mm. 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 Enemy. Uh, no, no, no. Ma, don't worry about the enemy. Just go. Mm. Mm. Have some more. Have some more. You like whatever you want. Just take it. Would you like some? Take take whatever you want. Uh. Mm. You're upset. You're angry inside. Have some more. My my daughter. Don't worry about Pastor Gavin. I'll deal with him. You just have some more. Oh, have some more. He brings us to the table. And there's a feast at the table. It's 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 not it's it's a it's it's a grand feast. He says, Come, come, come. Oh Lord, you don't know what's waiting for me in the office. Do you know what's waiting for you? At the table, at my table, says the Lord. Come, come to my table. There's, there's so much at my table. Come and, come and eat from it. Come and enjoy my table. Hmm, hmm. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Hmm, hmm. Those, well, you know, those, those pizzas are lovely. Mm. Oh, lovely. Hmm. Hmm. The table is not just a grand feast. The table for me as your father, as your shepherd, is the place where I gather the family. When we were at home and we were looking and said we need a dining table, we counted and said, Sammy, Joanna, Mommy, Daddy, let's have a table where we could seat four. We wanted to gather the family. And when the enemy is coming, he, he picks you out, he calls you out, and he says, come to the table. Come to the table. David was able to see because of the table. You see, God brought him in and sat him at the table. David was able to see, I'm an insider. Goliath is uncircumcised. He cannot come to the table. That's what it meant. That's what it meant. David was coming from the table. Beloved ones, Sammy's going to bring those slides to you just now. Beloved ones, when you come to the shepherd, when you come to the shepherd, what does he do? The first thing that the shepherd done, it says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup run it over. God prepares a table. It's a place where you identify family. It's not just eating the goodies. Oh yeah, they are pretty good, pretty nice, pretty tasty. Good stuff over here. But you need to understand in the Jewish culture. You need to understand in your home, your table is the place of identity and family. So many of us have lost that ability just now. So many of us just, just think that the table is about food. No. Yes, there's, he, he's, he, he always hosts a banquet. Our father, if you're not, if you don't like banquets, you don't like heaven. Because, because my father, when he saves me, the moment he saves me, he, he says over here, he brings me to the table. Again, I'm looking in, in Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 4. When he brings me in, he says, he brought me to his banqueting table. And his banner over me is love. It's love. God, I am so upset. I'm so afraid this is happening. Oh, the enemy, the enemy, the enemy, the enemy. You're my daughter. You're my daughter. The enemy. No, you're my daughter. Leave the enemy. This is my table. I count my children at my table. And so they do it in different places. They do it in different places. They, they, they do it at Thanksgiving Day. 
they have they have when the whole family comes in and they gather around the table and 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 the psalmist writes and says he brought me to the banqueting table his banner over me is love when the prodigal son was lost and he gets messed up in a dark world he brings him by his rod and staff he brings him out of the dark world he runs to his father he says treat me as a slave he says i can't treat you at my as my slave i'm ordering a banquet there's gonna be a table we're gonna have a celebration what's lost what's found when you're repenting god brings you to a table i'm looking and saying in in revelation chapter 3 verse 20 when this when this when <coughs> when we when we go away i'm so excited about the table <coughs> In Revelations, it says, when we go away from him and his staff brings us back, he says, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hears my voice, I will come. And I'm not sitting in the hall. I will come and sup with him. I am going straight to the table and he will sup with me the table is the place where he separates his own the table he gathers family and he affirms them he says yeah yeah you want to tell him oh yes god i'm so sorry i went there i done this i i, I squandered the money i squandered this he says i don't want to hear that i've got a table prepared for you and i want you to sit with me even after all the things have gone wrong i want you to sit with me in the table at the table you know in the book of revelations one day we are going to be with him and this world is done everything in it is over we're going to go to heaven and you know what he says over there what the shepherd says he says blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb the marriage supper of the lamb and he says these are the true words then i fell down to his feet to worship him heaven is a separation of sons and daughters lord there's a problem Let's talk about you. I'm not wanting to hear about your shepherd. I want to talk about you. I want to separate you from everything. Come to my table. My table is not just for food. My table is for you to know I have chosen you. You are the apple of my eye. You heard the enemy and the enemy will diminish you and the memory want to make you think you're ordinary. But I bring you to the table to tell you you're not a, you're not a little chicken in the hands of a vulture. You're not a lamb in the, in, the, in the mouth of the lion. I put my stuff and I pull you out of the lion's mouth and I bring you to the table. I, I, I don't want to know all the evil things. I want to tell you I have loved you with an everlasting love. You are the apple of my eye i will bring you through whatever battle you bring through whatever the enemy has done wherever there is a broken world whether if there's are evil partners in your business maybe hurting and difficult family situation just now maybe you're going through the threat of divorce just now maybe there's vengeance around you the presence of the enemy adversity conflict is inside and outside hatred there are missiles in the air. It's flying against you. I want you to know God is preparing a feast for you. The devil is preparing the beast for you. But God is preparing a feast for you. You know, he's not saying, he's not looking at you. I remember my friend Lou, Louis Giglio. He done a beautiful message on this. And, 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 and he reminded us and he said, he said, I, I'm not telling you, uh, I'm going to make the trouble fly away. I'll make the enemy disappear. I'll somehow put you in one bubble, in one escape capsule and take you out. I'm not telling you that, the, that uh, everything, I'll make everything just go away. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're sitting here just now and you're saying, God, make it all go away, make it all go away. Maybe you want it to all go away. God, put me, give me the escape road and take me out of this and just uh, uh, obliterate the enemy. In the middle of the battle, I call you to my people, to my table, because I want to show off to the world. I want to show off to that, that wicked enemy there that I'm interested in you. And I want him to look at my table. And I want him to see that I am with you. 
And I want him to know who you are to me. I want him to know that I have loved you with an everlasting love. I want the Goliath to know that you are the apple of my eye. I want him to know that I will die for you. I want him to see you. I want him to see where you are. I want to show the whole world that you that you are mine. That you are mine. That I'm serious about you. And I'll provide whatever you are need. And amongst the many titles, one of the titles that is used again and again and again, when the enemies came around my chosen one, the enemies came around them so many times. But every time they came near him, they looked and said, The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Their enemy recognized that they were at the table of the father, the shepherd. And the enemy began to say, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of the widow, she's not alone. The God of the orphan, she's not alone. She's been through funeral, she's been through loss, she's seen cancer, she's seen sickness work. But when everything is done and the funeral is over, I bring her and I bring the children to my table. Because I'm the father to the orphans and the husband to the widows. My table, my table is not just about the food. My table is the place where we come and sit with daddy. And daddy says, here's my children. I pray today that your table is strong. Have you lost your table, daddies? I was telling them in my home just this last week. I said, I don't care what happens. We're not going to sit and watch any news channel with our food in our hands. We will sit at the table, look into each other's eyes and remember we are a family. What good is it to go and listen to all the news of the devil with the food in your hand that God has blessed you with? Well, the table, number one, it is the place where he tells you, you are precious. I love you with an everlasting. You are mine. He shows off to the enemy. He shows off to the powers of darkness that are there around him. Secondly, the table is the place where he, where, while you are there, he tells the devil, get out from here. You have no place at this table. You have no place at this table. You see, my people, uh, those early Jewish guys, they thought that only they will have place at the table. And in, in Matthew 3, 9, uh, you know, I had to tell them, don't ever think, don't ever think that you're the only ones. Out of stones, I can raise children. And I've raised them in the nations today. I had to tell them, I said, many will come from the east and the west and they will recline at the table of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in this kingdom. In the kingdom that I brought you into. When you get born again, I brought you into the kingdom of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The enemies were strong against him. I had to tell them in Luke, I had to tell them, I said, you yourselves will be cast out, but the others that come from north and south will be reclined. I, I, in the table, I can't keep the rebels. The rebels that are hurting you, the rebels against you. You know, my, my son, I found him and he was lost and he said, Daddy, I don't want to be your son. I, uh, I'll be a slave. I brought him to the table and I said, you can only be my son. I don't keep slaves. I love you with an everlasting love. But my other son was angry. And he didn't come to the table. He walked away. He was jealous. He was angry. He, he didn't want to be with my, my, my lost one that was found. I had to tell them in John chapter 13. In fact, I told them in John 6 verse 70. I said to them, I said, one of you is the devil. And so that night when I made that table... John got close to me and leaned on my shoulder and he said, uh, Good shepherd, who's the one that's going to betray you? And I, I dipped a muscle. I said, watch the one that I give it to. And I dipped it in the vine and I gave it to him. And I told him, whatever you have to do, do it quickly. 
And he rose up from the table and he went out into the night because the table separates. The table separates sheep from goats. It separates your adversity from you. It separates the Goliaths from the Davids. It separates bad men. It separates the evil at my table. You see, the, it, I, I evict the devil at the table. I throw him out. I make sure he's not there. And Satan entered Jesus, Judas, and he went, that's my table. It's a welcome place for you. But at the table, your enemy cannot come to this table. Your enemy has to stay away from this table. Your enemy has no access to this table. That's why I call you to the table. That's why I call you to the table. To keep your enemy outside the door. To tell him he has no place. You see, so many times he comes, he's in your head. He's in your thoughts. He's been around you in your workplace eight to ten hours. He comes into your home. He speaks against you in your home. He turns the wife against the husband, husband against the wife, child against the parent, and parent against the child. And, and all puts all this negative stuff. And you're eating, eating, eating. I want you to come to my table and eat. I want you to let go of those thoughts. I want you to let go of those things. I want you to let go. So many of your marriages would have been saved. Your homes would have been saved. Your families would have been saved if you stopped bringing the devil to the table. And I hope somewhere today you're looking and saying, Devil, you cannot pull a table, chair at this table. You can't pull a chair at this table. You can't budge into this table because this table belongs to the shepherd. He wants to come and he stands on the sideline. But I'll tell you the third thing about this table. You know, at this table, at this table, I do different things. And, and in, in John chapter 13, verses 3 to 6, you know, I, 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 I took that moment when I, when I got up and, and I put a towel around. I, I took off my mantle and I put the towel off and I, and I put it down and I, I began to wash your feet. I began to wash your feet. That's what the table does. If you thought it's about cutlery, it's about spoons and forks, or maybe you're feeling uncomfortable. God, we're at the table. Don't touch my feet. At the table. At the table. At the table, at the table, I'll bring you in and I'll wash your feet. Wash your feet. How beautiful on the mountains of the feet of him that bring good news. And I will cleanse you. I cleanse you at the table. The table is to make you clean. He, he, he crowds your minds. He puts evil thoughts inside. I was sitting at a table. I was sitting at a table. And this woman came. And this woman came. And she was weeping. And she was crying. And the Pharisees who were there made fun of her. And as she was pouring her tears on my feet and covering it with ointment. At the table. At the table. They condemned her. And I looked at them and I said, To whom has more sin shall more be forgiven? And at that table, I looked at them and I said, You are not as clean as her, because I have cleaned her all the more. Oh, Simon, oh, Pharisee, she has been forgiven more. Her feet have been washed more. She is cleansed more. At the table. You see the table. The table is not just the food. My table. I will bring you. And I will cleanse you. And I will clean you up. I will clean you. I feed your soul in the green pastures. My rod and staff will go with you to keep you in the right way. Discipline, punishment, judgment, different things will meet you to keep you saved. But at the table, I clean you up. I, joy, I rejoice over you with singing. 
I rejoice over you. I sing songs over you. And, and, and at a table like this, the devil was standing at Zechariah chapter 3. And he says he's standing there. And, and the accuser stands. It stood that day when this woman came. It stood again when Mary came with the beautiful perfume and put it against me. The accuser was standing saying, Dirty woman, dirty woman, dirty woman, dirty woman. Take the money, sell it out. The accuser comes and I looked at the accuser and said oh you're talking about Joshua my son he's the brand plucked from the fire he's the dirty one in your eyes but when he sits at my table he's the brand plucked from the fire take off his dirty clothes change his turban give him everything beautiful when the, the devil doesn't have a seat here he doesn't have an opinion here I don't look at what I'm not looking at how he sees you I look at Joshua and I say he's a brand plucked from the fire you are fearfully and wonderfully made you are mine I don't look at you I am your God I don't look at you wearing the same glasses and the specks and the colors that are there in the uh, that 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 Satan has I don't look at you the way Satan does I don't look at you the way a condemning parent or a condemning husband or a spouse does I don't look at you with all the condemning words that perhaps the man in the office does. Come to my table. What is dirty, I will clean. In the table, I will prepare you with washing. And I will tell your enemies to look. I will tell your enemies to look. Your shepherd, the great I am, the lion and the lamb is washing your feet. And when you go out, the God of Shalom will crush Satan underneath those feet that he has washed. That he has washed. I know, I sense, I sense a heaviness for some of you. Let me wash your feet this morning, says the Lord. Come to my table, my children. My table is about fathering. It's about belonging. My table is the place where you will be separated from the devil and the voice of the devil. He has no voice here. My table is the table where I will clean you to be what I have made you to be. He's fighting my plan for you. I made Joshua a firebrand. I made him to take the challenges that he was going to face. He is fighting, not you. He's fighting my plan, says the Lord your God. I, when before your mother's womb, I made you. I created you with a destiny. And sometimes you think it's all over. Everything is done. It's all going to go in. I want you to know that I plucked you from the fire. You see, in the table, don't, the devil can't come near. He can prowl, he can growl like a roaring lion, but that lion can growl and he can growl all around. He can go all around. He can have the hunger and passion of a very demonic spirit. But I want him to see that Baba is with you. I want him to see it. Don't, don't, don't let him have a conversation. You, you never talk with a killer at my table. You never talk with a killer at my table. You never come to my table and start repeating what he's telling you. I want you to say what I am telling you. That I love you with an everlasting love. And that you are fearfully, wonderfully made. And I will sing songs over you. And you are more than a conqueror. And nothing can separate me from you from my love. No tribulation, no hardship, no evil, no conflict, no pain, not hunger, not discontentment, not, not all, the, all the powers and demons of heaven. Not Satan himself can separate you from my love. 
I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. I have created you. When you converse and begin to talk with negativity, when you begin to talk with negative emotions, when you when when you begin to act under your outbursts, when you can't kill, act out of your pain, when you when you start allow the devil to pull a chair in and 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 and, and you he will he will make you think that you're not going to make it out of this. Oh, this is the end of the road. I'm going to take you out. You will never break free from this situation. You will never change. You will never get up from this. You, he will tell you, you're never good enough. You're not worthy. You never really mattered every age. Hey, come on. The, all your life people never had any value. Your father doesn't have value for you. This one doesn't value for you. Your family doesn't. Your children have no value for you. Your spouse doesn't have value. He'll tell you that you're not with any value. When he tells you all those negative things, I tell you nobody likes you. Oh, nobody likes you. Oh, amen. You, you're, the, you're, the, you're the fifth daughter of a widow. Who likes you? Nobody likes you. He'll tell you those things. He'll whisper in your nose. Yes. And he'll say nobody. And you'll begin to say, oh, nobody's looking at me. Nobody notices me. Nobody cares for me. You feel like you're going to get wiped out. They all hate me. Everybody's against me. All the kids in school, in college, all my colleagues, everybody seems to be against me. Sometimes you end up feeling the whole world is against me. Maybe there's someone, but, but not all are against you. I want you to know the devil's a liar. Everybody is out to get me is not true. You'll get into a defensive position. Vengeance will come into your heart. And you'll come and pray to me. And you'll say, you know my son David, sometimes he would be very angry. And he'll say, God, dash them against the rock. Split their heads on the rock. Uh, take a sword and cut their pregnant women. So the baby comes gushing out and lies. My son David sometimes will be very angry. But he'll end the psalm and he'll say, oh, but... Uh, but you are a good God. I know you won't then do that. He would come so angry. But when he sits at my table, he will end the psalm saying, You won't do that evil even against the enemy. While I won't do that against the enemy, will I allow the enemy do it against you? I'll wash you clean those thoughts, those values, those attitudes. Everyone hates me. I'm not going to make it through. I don't know what's going to happen. I just need to survive. You're not a survivor. You're the child and daughter of a king. The one that rules. Not a survivor. You are not a survivor. In the table. At the table. The fourth thing on that table over there. He, I, I tell you my plans. And you want to know what plan I have for the devil. That's the, you, you're very concerned about that. But I will sit you at the table. I'll sit you at the table and I'll wash your feet and I'll tell you, I want you to do ministry. And you might look and say, oh God, how can, how can I do ministry? And I, and I sat with them in John chapter 12, 13, 14 to 17. It's written there. I washed their feet. I got them ready. I told them about the plan for ministry. I told them that they cannot do anything without me. But with me, they will bear much fruit. And apart from me, they can do nothing. But I told them with me, ask anything. I gave them secrets at the table. Ask anything in the world. I told them at the table, this world will hate you. I told them at the table, I said, they will say all manner of evil against you. They'll abuse you. They despitefully use you. I told them at the table, in this world you will have trouble. But fear not. I have overcome the world. I told them. I told them at the table. I'm going to tell you a very big secret just now. You came and sit at the table and you're asking me about the three bedroom house. No, this world and everything in it will pass away. But let me tell you something. In my father's house is an amazing mansion. And in that amazing mansion, I go to prepare a room for you. And when the room is ready, I will come again. It will be the most beautiful place you have ever lived in and ever stayed in. The green pastures, the living waters, the still waters, the quiet places, the shalom of God. 
I will wipe every tear away from your eye and that place pain will be gone. Sickness will be no oh, more. In my father's house, I will make a place for you. And don't get worried. The comforter is coming. When I'm not here, the comforter will come and he will be with you. And your sorrow will be turned into joy. And I will give you my shalom. Not as the world has. The world has a peace that is it's here today and gone tomorrow. But I will give you a peace that passes all understanding. And, and here I'm telling you the future and the destiny. Don't just say get me out of this mess. If whatever is around you, if it looks like everything is broken down, you will walk even in a valley of dry bones and you will prophesy. Because my peace I leave with you. My peace I give it to you. I'm praying for you. You go through hardship. Yes, you're at my table. You'll go out. Some of you will betray me. Deny me. You'll run. But Peter, I told him at the table, I have already prayed for you. When they tried to kill him at the end of his life, he said, I don't want to be crucified with my head. I put my head down and the legs up. That's my Peter. I prayed for him at the table. Let me tell you quickly. Again, there's a fifth thing at the table that happens. The table is the place where I, where I give you covenant and I make fresh promises. You want a fresh promise from me? Come to my table. Fresh promise at my table. It's, it's, it's not just a lucky dip on 31st night and first early morning on January when the year is turning. There are covenantal blessings. There's abundant life at the table. When you come to the table, I pull the covenant out. I pull the covenant out. And in, and in John chapter 6, that's when I told them. I said, I said, you need to eat my body and you need a drink of my cup. And on that night when I was with them, I reminded them and said, whoever eats of this, of, of my body, whoever eats of my body, I will raise him up. I will raise him up. I told him, whoever eats of my body has eternal life. Though he may die, yet will he live. And I will raise him up in the last day. And I said, when you eat of my body, when you, when, 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 you, when you eat of my body, when you eat of my body, yeah, take it, take it, go on. Eat, eat of it, eat of it. When you eat of my body, I will remain in you. And that's the connection. It comes from the table. It comes from the table. I, it comes from the table. And I said, and I, and I would look at you and I say, when you're at the table, when you're at the table, I would say, this is my blood of the new covenant. Of the new covenant. When you come to the table, I told my son, Apostle Paul, I said, look in 1 Corinthians chapter, in, in, in Matthew 26, it's the blood of a promise. At the table, you will get the blood of the promise. At the table, I told him, the cup of blessing, which we bless. It's a cup. It's a cup of blessing. It's a cup of blessing at my table. Drink, drink. Drink often. Drink as many times as you remember. Don't get busy with the world come to the table don't lose the table at the table is a cup of blessing at the table I will bless you at the table I will make covenant with you I will affirm there will be new blessings at the table you want me to bless you because you're walking into the Toyota or the BMW company showroom or you're walking into the flat where guys are building everything else at the table I will bless you with an eternal inheritance that will never be taken in. For the world and all that is in it is passing away. But when I, you drink of the cup of blessing, I give you life and life eternal. Life eternal. It's a cup of blessing. It's a cup of blessing. It's a cup of blessing. Drink from it. It's a cup of blessing. I bless you. I bless you. 
And I love the worship this morning. It was a blessing. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you and the Lord make His face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and the Lord give you His peace at, at, at the table. At the table. Don't worry about your hair. There's blessings over it. There's blessings over it. I will bless you. I will bless you at the table. I will bless you at the table. And at the table. And at the table. The sixth thing you find at the table. He anoints my head with oil. My cup. Run it over. My cup run it over. At the table. I want the devil to see. I want him to see. I want to see him. I want him to see that you hold my blood. I want him, I want him to see that my anointing is resting upon you. And you devil better get used to this. My chosen ones. My beloved ones. I've chosen them as a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. I've washed their feet and they will crush you underneath their feet. They will not be desperate. I anoint your head with oil. Come to the table. Come to my table. I pray your morning devotion, you find the green pastures. And I pray in the evening, you find the table. You find my table. Come. Come to me. Come to me. I know your heart. I know your pain. I know it. Value. Samson didn't value the anointing. Judas never valued the blood. But come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Stop running after the world. Stop trying to manage your own life. Bring your children here. There's an evil world that's coming. There's an evil world that's coming out. They need to know the table of the Lord. They need to know my table. They need to know that in this table, at this table, sits a good shepherd. And then, and as I said in Isaiah 9 verses 4 to 7, the yoke of the burden, the staff of his shoulder, the rod of the oppressor will be broken. Every brute of the trampling warrior in battle and tumult, every garment rolled in blood will be burned for fuel and fire. I don't care what the devil has done to you. I don't care how much he's hurt you. I don't care how much evil he's done against you. I am the anointed one. And I bring my anointing to you. I bring my anointing to you. For unto us a child is born and a son is given. And government is on his shoulder. His name is Wonderful Counselor. Prince of Peace. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. And of the increase of his government at this table. There shall be no end. And the gate of hell will not prevail against the covenant at this table. The gate of hell cannot annul this covenant. I pull my son Samson out when he, when he broke covenant. When he destroyed covenant. I still reached out. And the enemy was under the feet of a fallen warrior. He was still my son. I was his shepherd. He was me. I was his shepherd. I want you to understand just now. My, you, I put the table in the middle. I want the enemies to see. I want to see how amazing your, your shepherd is and how amazing your shepherd thinks you are. The enemy is compelled to look and see how God has provided for you. We are living in war times. We are living in war against an enemy that is much stronger. But my son David never ever said he's stronger. He said the lion came, a bear came, both were stronger than me. 
but my story is my god gave me deliverance my son david did not say ah i have strength and i conquered thing my son david you know you know what happened i delivered david David never boasted of his will. David never said I was stronger than the lion. David looked at Goliath and he told Goliath his secret. He said, "Goliath, you're a you're the undisputed champion. But the God that delivered me against the lion and the bear today will deliver me from your hand." My son was humble. My son took his victory from the table. He never looked and said God give me strength I I some I want to pray one prayer prayer and bind that person against me and I want to knock his teeth out and I want to get somebody to go against him My son looked and said I know you're against me but my God will deliver me Oh you want me to get out there and fight the enemy I'm telling the enemy just now this is my daughter watch out watch out watch out there's war on all fronts the spiritual emotional health wealth life sometimes will seem unfair there's a real war as with the principalities and powers of darkness come to my feet don't worry he's baring his teeth he's growling he's snarling he thinks he's got you It's not the differences that are destroying your work. You sometimes we say, "Oh, our marriage is falling apart because of differences." No, the devil, the enemy is against you. He's working against your work, against your marriages, against your children. The enemy is there to steal, kill and destroy. He he wants to destroy the glory that I want to give to you. He wants to destroy my plan and destiny that I blessed you with even before you when you were in mother's womb. He's not just hurting you. He wants to hurt me. He wants to hurt my heart. He will force on you identity and meanings of life. He'll force purpose out of you. He'll bring conflict in. He'll want to convince you that you are not what God has made you to be. and you'll be afraid you'll want to come back before god and say oh just let me be a slave oh god just re- just rescue me i'm not interested in just rescue you i want you to sit in high places with me at my table in high places for i have raised you up from the depths of this world don't play don't play in the low places don't play with the rich and famous of this world act come to me love me deny yourself take up your cross follow to the table because victory is sure at this table i make a covenant and promise that your battle belongs to the lord at this table but the victory belongs to the people the victory belongs to the people to the victory belongs to the people you know how you fight you come and dine at my table that's how you fight that's how you fight that's how you fight You don't fight there. When you get loved here, when you get empowered here, the devil knows. The Lord is her shepherd. She will not want. He takes her to the place of shalom and makes her lie down in green pastures. He leads her beside still waters. She frolics. She jumps, she has fun, she has laughter. He makes you strong to laughter and peace. And lying down. And and then he as you walk through the valley with the rod and the staff, he disciplines you, punishes you, sometimes judges you. 
and with his staff he lifts you up when you didn't listen to everything and then as you walk in through the valley and the enemy is coming he says don't stand with the enemy come here what business what business you want to go out there and stand and do all this stuff he says come i bring you to my banqueting table and my banner over you is love and i pray tonight i pray just now in this moment that this day you will feel god gathering you at the table it's not just eating that goes on here anointing comforting cleaning so many beautiful things ownership boastfulness he boasts before the enemy rekindling of love a divorcing of the negative thought a chasing away of the devil sometimes you know we go to god and we pray and the devil sits in our thoughts in our minds and sits right beside us when we pray my father who art in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give me my daily bread and deliver me from evil for thine is the kingdom and its banquet the power the glory forever and ever amen close your eyes for a moment take some time the lord is my shepherd just close your eyes the holy spirit is coming so powerfully so beautifully he's got it's like i can i can literally see he's got your heart in his hands and like yeah i remember that song that the youth danced to tell your heart to beat again tell your heart to beat again it's like after a open heart surgery the surgeon is massaging that heart to beat again i i'm looking just now and i see god massaging some of those hearts you lived with emotions anger fear doubt hatred you've wasted so much of your life negative thoughts negative attitudes uncleanness in your mind uncleanness in your spirit you've even gone to the altar to the lord's table you have even taken the bread in your hand you took the cup but you went back to the world you don't enjoy your green pasture your devotion life in the green pasture is gone dead because you don't adore god anymore and he calls you my child i'll wash your feet i will cleanse your sin i will remind you that you are fearfully wonderfully made and i love you with an everlasting love oh god is showing me just now there's so many there's quite a few just now you're living behind hardness you have a hard outside oh you you some of you think it's a man thing oh i don't cry i i'm i i like to live with a hard crust and god's breaking you just now because says at my table you will not afraid to be tender you will not be afraid to be tender you will not fear tears like my son my son cried and he's your good shepherd god is breaking hardness just now come on come to the table don't the minute i'm saying come that don't run with your problems learn to keep it outside learn to keep it outside and come to the father sammy played that song lord bless you and keep you and beloved i want you to get on your knees and begin to pray play it very silently i want an altar experience i want a table experience just now my god is bringing me to his table i want to tell you about this message you won't understand i looked at my friend louis uh, series and i was so impressed by it and i took eight pages of notes and i was ready to preach this message 
And on, on Thursday night, after I wrote all those notes, on Thursday night, I looked at my wife and I said, well, the message is done for Sunday. And Thursday night at 9.30, I went and lie down on my bed because I wanted to get up at, at, at 4 o'clock in the morning. And from 9.30 to 1.30, God preached this message to me nonstop. Hallelujah. And I got up at at at. It was Independence Day the next day. Dr. Beth and others were going to minister to us. I got up. I got up at almost 12.15 and I went to the hall. My wife and everyone were soundly sweeping. And I went to the door. I made myself the most lovely, lovely strawberry Sri Lankan Dilma tea. I took out all the goodies that I could have. I put it in front of me. I brought the bread out. I, 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 I put the, the peanut butter on it and, uh, oh, and, the, and the, yeah, yeah, the Nutella, the Nutella. I love Nutella. And I, and I lavished it. Oh, I lavished it on the bread. And I sat with all these goodies. I, you would look and say, Pastor, were you alone? No. I was playing worship music and at midnight, 30 minutes after midnight, I sent you one of those beautiful songs that God was playing over my heart. I felt His presence. I felt the table of the Lord. The COVID season, I've been fighting it because I want to see that every member, every member in our church finds a table. I fought it hard for months and there can be times when you're feeling something inside is, is pulling you down. But my mom and dad were sleeping in the other room. Sammy was sleeping. Amin was sleeping. And I was at his table. And I was eating and I was drinking. And I was enjoying myself. In the presence of Jesus. Slept for two and a half, three hours. And then was in the morning prayer. What a powerful morning prayer that was. Celebrated Independence Day. Came in for recording at 8 o'clock in the morning, worshipped with the worship team over here. His table in, empowers me and it will empower you just now. I had to leave those eight sheets aside and start writing this message again. Because the table is not about, the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking. It's about the Father saying, I'm showing the world who I am at my table and I beg God today that every home will have a table where the father and the parents and the mother are holding their children together and they cry and they bless and they pray together and the children at that temple a table go back and say you know who's my dad you know that's the first thing I did when I went to school when somebody teased me done something against me I said, you know who's my dad? He was that officer with stars and stripes. Do you know who's my dad? That's what children say, right? Let's become children once again. Let's look at the devil. Come on, do that. Look at the devil and say, do you know who's my dad? Come on, look at the devil and say just now, can you see where I am? Can you see who I'm eating with? Can you see who's in making promises to me? Can you see who's blessing me? Can you see who's cleansing me? Maybe you're weak. Maybe you're bedridden just now. But tell the devil to look at the side of your bed right now. There is a table. And you're never away from the table. Maybe you are differently abled. But I pray today that, that my nephew Sinip in Nagaland... There will be a table for him and his dad, Toshi, and a shepherd. I pray that there will be a table. And he will lie on his bed and he will laugh at the devil and he will tell the devil, can you see whose table I'm eating at? And so, Father, come, come just now. Come, Holy Spirit. Yeah, you're touching the hurt, you're touching the pain. Because, because hurt and pain have nothing to do with this table. Take it away. Come. Come and be loved afresh. 
He brought me to the banqueting table. His banner over me is love. Come away with me, my love, he calls. For I will rejoice over you. I will sing songs over you. He says it from Zephaniah. You're not valued by your money, your job, your work, my child. You will make it through. Don't say, I don't know if I can make it. Don't say, I'm wondering what's going to be my future. Here is the future at the table. I will show you the future. I love you. I love you. I love you, says the Lord your God. Let's close. Let's close with that benediction song playing right now. And I urge you, don't get off your feet. Stay in prayer. Stay in prayer. Close your doors. Close your windows. You're privileged. You don't have to get up out of the service and run away. We will be online in 10 minutes for the children's program or maybe 15 minutes for the children's program. But take this time. Dedicate your home and say, Lord, your table in my house, your table with my family, with my children, your table in my office, your table everywhere. And I say to you just now, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his shalom. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship, the communion of the Holy Spirit, anoint you, keep you at the table now and until Jesus comes and says, the table has got bigger and better and grander. Welcome home, my child. To that end, amen, amen, and amen. And stay in prayer, stay in prayer, stay in prayer. Yes, Sammy, yes. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Just you, Lord, turn his face.
children, and the children, and the children be His favor, be upon you, and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and the children, and the children. Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen.